right, I'm back with another tutorial. This is Jason with Inkspit Designs. Uh, we're going to do a, a, a tutorial on linking objects today. Uh, the Winter Olympics are here in about a week they start. So I wanted to do something uh, with the Olympic rings, although as you can see they're not the, the correct colors that we normally use for the Olympic rings. Um, as a kind of a disclaimer, these are the Olympic rings are heavily copyrighted and so I don't want to use the exact uh, colors and everything for so I don't run the risk of getting taken off YouTube so we'll see if uh, if this video stays up um, so as you can see they're they're intertwining rings and we're gonna work on this um, see what the easiest way is and also uh, we're gonna look at a couple different ways to do it so you'll have some options so let's go ahead and uh, shrink this up let's put it up here in the corner kind of as a reference to go by we're gonna start out just create a simple uh, ellipse hit get the ellipse tool hitting the L key or pull it up there in the toolbar and uh, there we go, we got a solid fill. We want a stroke, and so let's switch that over to the stroke. Come over here to the, the stroke palette. Let's raise it up. And let's make uh let's make some nice fat rings. Let's see how that does. Maybe make them a little bit larger. All right, we're gonna run off our page here. Maybe down a little bit. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to create the right amount. So I'm just gonna hold down the Alt key and uh, drag this over. I'm holding the Alt key and the Shift key so they stay exactly in line. And we want some down here. Uh, about there looks good. Hold down the Alt and Shift key and let's go for about there. Uh, one quick tip for you. If you've got some kind of design or you, know, you bring up an Illustrator document and you've got a bunch of colors in it, things with colors, Actually, you can get all those colors in your color palette very easily. Just select the entire uh, design, the thing that has the colors you want to use, and then come over here to your swatches palette, and you see this little folder here, a new color group. All you're going to do is click that, and you're going to get a dialog box up here that says uh, create from, and we want selected artwork, the artwork that we have uh, chosen. And we're going to hit OK. You can go ahead and name it, of course, if you want. But we're going to hit OK. And if you look over here in my swatches palette, I've got all these colors uh, represented here in this folder, and so we can easily grab them um, for the design for any other thing that we want to work on in the in the document. And that's document specific; it'll stay within that document. Okay, so back to our rings here. Let's select all of them, and as you can see, there the paths running through each of them. There are stroke. We want to go up to Object, Expand. This is what we talked about in our last tutorial, and we want to expand the stroke. So leave the stroke selected, and there we go everything's expanded. If we go to our control Y or outline view we can see that the actual strokes are expanded and what we're gonna do, let's uh, let's go ahead and color these now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose uh, the ring I want to color and the eyedropper tool which is the shortcut key is I on the keyboard and let's choose this first one go to the next ring choose the second one and so on. Let's do this Get these all ready to go. The yellow ring and last but not at least the gray. I don't know if that's the same gray or not. It looks like it is. Okay. Let's. Uh, so as you can see, the rings are sitting on top, and it's it depends on the order um, that you have them listed up here in your layer, layers panel. If you move things around, the order is going to change. For instance, if I choose this, as you can see, this is on top of the purple. This gray ring is on top of the purple and the green. If I right click and go to Arrange, send it back, all of a sudden the other ones are on the back. And a very handy shortcut for this is holding down the control button on the keyboard and hitting the up or the right and left bracket tool. Uh, that's just below the plus or minus on a, a standard keyboard. So if I select that and then hit hold down control and hit the right bracket, nothing's happening, but if I hit the left bracket, uh, I might have to go all the way up. It might be. Well, first, let's bring it to the top. Bring to front. And if I hold it down, there we go. You can see there as I do that, I hit it once, it's it's going below the, the green one, and if I hit it again, it's going to go below, below the other one. So let's bring it up twice. And so depending on your layers, how many layers you have, it might take a little while to, to bring it through. But that's just a shorter way um, of getting it you know, to the point where you want it in, in the layer stack. Okay. So we've got everything selected. 
um, we're gonna have it keep it all selected and let's actually move this this gray one over just slightly and let's let's grab both of these and move them up just so we have enough clearance so we can see what's going on okay I like that a little bit better all right so we're gonna select them all and we're gonna come down here to the Pathfinder tool and we're gonna choose divide and what divide does as I select that it makes cuts every place that the design intersects it, it places a cut so now if we look at the outline view um, we can see everything's cut there so what we do now is we are going to choose, I'm going to grab the direct selection tool which is the A on the, the keyboard and to reference our other rings up here this yellow ring should go over the top right here and so we want to hold down shift as we select these three pieces and we're going to come over here to the unite uh, or I'm sorry, the merge uh, command in the Pathfinder that will merge the light colors so we merge those and those will, st those will become one piece and then with this uh, kind of magenta color, pink color we select these three pieces, including that yellow one. Actually, first thing we want to do is is grab this color, so we can choose that yellow one, grab that, and, and change it to the color. Now select these three pieces. Same thing, merge command, and we're going to repeat this process wherever we want this to happen. So on this purple one, we want to uh, create this piece, make this piece purple. So we're going to select those three, hit the Actually, first, I keep forgetting we need to turn that purple. So, direct selection tool, choose that yellow piece, eyedropper, select it. And now we want these three pieces to merge together. All right, and then over here, same thing. We want to turn that piece purple. So, eyedropper, select what we want. And then the direct selection tool by hitting A and select all of the the pieces there and then hit the merge and that all becomes one piece and then over here we want this piece to to become the light green color so let's do that and then uh, select them all merge those together and uh, let's see these need to be merged together those are going to stay gray so come over here merge it And right here, we want this to stay gray as well. So let's merge those. And if you ever aren't sure which ones you have merged and haven't, just go back into your outline view and you can see here. Um, these are all over, you know, merging the way we want. We can see here we have lines intersecting, so we need to, it looks like the last, last one we need to do. So let's go back to that. And we want that one, as we can see, to stay yellow. So select those three pieces around it click merge so they combine and now as you can see in our outline view everything is intersecting in the right way the way that we want it um, so that's how we want we can ungroup it keep it all separate layers do whatever we want with it so that's uh, the way that I typically go about it using that pathfinder tool um, to divide everything and then merge it together with the colors that you want um, so there is one other way and that's by using the shape builder tool and I think we'll use, we'll do that go over that in another tutorial because it has its own set of features and also problems and times when you should use it and when you should not but this is a, a great way to merge items have things overlap you can create chain effects um, rope effects anything that you need to overlap each other even text works great overlap pieces of the text and have other pieces of the text going behind other letters um, uh, this is a great effect and something that will come in very handy with all of your designs. And now we're ready to cut out. We can cut out this even as a vinyl decal. Cut it out in each of its colors. And uh, and if we go here to the, the layers panel, we go to that layer, turn off. You can see it will just cut off or cut out that that yellow part. If we go to the pur or the get rid of this purple one as well. Each of these. We can see that it'll how it'll cut out each piece individually, and then we can just overlap them. You can, you know, if you need to do it all at once, you can overlap them as cells. But that's that's one way of of doing it, of creating that effect. All right, this has been Jason with Inkspit Designs, and uh, give our video a like, subscribe, and uh, hit us up on Twitter at 
Everything's in the, the description. You can go ahead and, and click down there and follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, and uh, let us know what other tutorials you guys want to see. All right, this has been Jason with Inkspit Designs. Talk at you later.